The dunes represent the greatest challenge to life in the desert. The sands don't retain water and there is only a bare minimum of nutrients available for plant life. Moreover, the winds constantly blow, moving the dunes in a ceaseless migration across the lonely desert. Life would seem to be impossible here. The constant movement of the dunes prevents vegetation from taking hold along the unstable slopes. But even here, plants have found a place in which they can gain a foothold. In these small plains, surrounded by dunes, bushes and small trees are able to grow. On solid ground, they can grow and reproduce, releasing seeds which will be carried away by the wind. All around, the threatening dunes continue their slow advance, blown by the wind. The landscape is constantly changing. New plains appear. Old ones are buried in the sand. The desert swallows up the vegetation, but the seeds have already been dispersed, and life will duly appear in another part of the Namib. Vegetation needs water in order to live, and here it seldom rains. Fortunately, in the area of the desert closest to the coast, mist descends almost weekly, and this is virtually the only source of water in these bone-dry lands. When it is misty, water runs down the trunk and the leaves into the ground, and is then absorbed by the roots closest to the surface. Mist brings 50 liters of water per square meter per year, double the amount of rain. The rocky plains further into the desert do not even receive the benefit of the mists, and vegetation here has had to find other ways to survive. Apparently, only lichen has been able to withstand this test. There would seem to be no grass, but shortly after the first rain, grass does indeed grow. The seeds had lain hidden beneath the ground. They rapidly soak up the water, then germinate, and complete their life cycle, in some cases, in just six weeks. Then they dry up and die, leaving behind the seeds, which can remain dormant for years, patiently waiting for the next rainfall. Not all plants have such a short life. Some, like this curiously named African splurge, can remain green for many years, though in order to do so, it has to evolve without leaves. Too much water would be lost through them, and so they have been converted into thorns. The chlorophyll is contained in the trunk. However, not all plants have had to give up their leaves. In fact, on the sandy plains in the north and the east, we find the plant with the longest leaves in the world. The Welwitchia has just two leaves which grow continuously throughout its life and can reach 18 meters in length. In order to reduce transpiration, they close their stomae during the hottest part of the day. At night, however, they keep them open in order to absorb the dew and then channel it down to the ground, where the efficient root will make sure none is lost. Some desert plants have not only been able to keep their leaves like the Wawitsia, but can grow up to heights of up to 9 meters in defiance of the scorching winds of the Nabib. This is the aloe or quiver tree. It stores water in the spongy pulp inside its trunk and branches. To combat the heat, it covers its bark with a white waxy secretion which reflects the rays of the sun and, at the same time, prevents water loss.
The leaves grow in clusters at the end of the branches. When there is extreme drought, the aloe can lose one or more of these clusters and so reduce water loss. The branch with its store of water, however, remains. <laughs>